In today's video, we're going to be going over and installing Podman. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meissen and I make videos on Beep Beep stuff. As the intro precluded, we are going to be going over Podman. We're going to install it and we're going to be getting started with it. This is going to be basic. This is a Podman guide for beginners. We are also using OpenSUSE MicroOS for the installation, which is a transactional server. So if you're not using a transactional server, some of the commands will be a little bit different, but I will post those commands in the description below the video. I use OpenSUSE for all of my enterprise server deployments as well as containerization and MicroOS is a transactional based server so every time you run an installation you're going to have to reboot the computer to apply those updates. In this video I won't be going into detail exactly why I'm using MicroOS or what Podman is. If you've arrived at this video already then you probably have an idea about what Podman is but in a later video I can go over this if you want or you can leave a comment down in the description below if you want some more explanation. I've written a small guide about the differences between Podman and Docker in one of the articles which I've also listed in the description below. Now that we have that out of the way let's hop over to the computer and get started. So on my micro OS server, I have cockpit installed. Uh, that's going to be in a later video, but inside of cockpit, I have terminal here. So the first step we need to do is make sure that we have everything updated on the system before we install Podman. So for that, we're going to type in transactional updates, uh, PKG for package, and then update, press enter and put in your password. And if you have any updates, it'll apply the updates. I'm going to hit clear now and uh, now we're going to install podman that is the next step so sudo transactional update package install podman now i already have podman installed uh, but what it's going to do is detect any new versions uh, and if there are any new versions it will do it so mine's not going to do anything if yours does uh, it'll install uh, if you're using transactional servers then obviously you need to reboot after the installation now, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we have the latest version of Podman and also make sure it's installed. So for that, you can type in a simple command, Podman, two dashes and version. And as you can see here, version 471, that's the latest version of the recording of this video. So one of the very first things you can do with Podman is to spin up a really simple container called Hello World. That's a pretty typical thing to do. So we we'll type in sudo podman run which is the command for running containers and i'm going to type in hello dash world press enter and what you're going to get is a cute little logo showing up of the podman uh, icon and also some website links for the podman project that lets you know that it's working i'm going to type in clear now so one of the most important things you'll want to do when doing any kind of containerization is to pull images it's one of the most common things you'll do so what we're going to do is we're going to pull an image of Ubuntu and we're going to pull that to this server. So for that, we're going to type in sudo podman and we're going to use the command pull. Hit space and I'm going to type in Ubuntu and we'll download 20.04. Press enter and it's going to download that from Docker.io and now it's downloaded. That's good. I can see that it's been done here. Now, what we want to do is we want to list uh, containers. This is also another very common command. So I'm going to type in clear to make it easier for you to follow. So to list containers that you have, including stopped containers, you type in sudo podman ps dash a. And as you can see here, uh, we have the container hello world that we just made a little bit earlier. You can see the container ID, the image that was used, uh, any extra commands that were added, when it was started, and if it finished or not. The name at the end is just a more of a user-friendly name. So that is the command, sudo podman ps-a, that's for looking at all containers, including stopped. I'm going to type in clear again. If you want to see what images that you've got downloaded, uh, to see all the images that you have downloaded, you can type in a really simple command, sudo podman images, Press enter, and as you can see here, I have a few different images downloaded. Uh, Nginx, Ubuntu, Portana, VS Codium, and the Hello World uh, application here. So that's uh, how you can see what you've downloaded. You can see the size here, when it was created. Um, so that's how you can find those. We're gonna clear that now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to run a really simple container using the Ubuntu image we've just downloaded. 
sudo podman run, as we have mentioned before. What I want is an interactive shell with this. So I'm going to type in the argument dash, which is IT. And I also want to remove this once it's been, uh, once I exit out of it, I don't want to keep it there all the time. So I'm going to type in dash dash RM for remove. And then I'm going to type in Ubuntu 20 zero uh, four and I want to use the bash uh, shell for that so I'm going to press enter now and as you can see what it's done is it's taken me out of my host which is OpenSUSE micro and it's put me inside uh, as root on this container here which is the one for Ubuntu that I've just created just now you can see how quickly those things get created that's an entire OS in a Docker uh, container or in a Podman or LXC container, they're very similar. So if you want to get out of this, you can just type in exit and now I'm back into my host. So using this uh, argument, um, arguments here in this command, uh, dash IT for the interactive shell uh, will give you a shell and you have to specify what shell you want. Uh, so I use the bash shell. Uh, and then you can get into the terminal from the terminal of your host. I'm going to type in clear. Now, what we want to do is we want to see what containers we have for the next uh, for the next part of this tutorial. So we're going to type in sudo podman and we're going to type in ps a. Now this is going to give us a list of the containers. Now we only have one container here. Now if you wanted to stop a container, right, what you would do is you would type in sudo podman stop and then the container ID. So I'm going to copy the container ID here, paste it hit enter and it's run the command. Now that container is stopped. It's really as simple as that. Type in clear. Now, one of the benefits of using containers is that you can bundle different uh, containers into pods uh, and then you can have similar uh, resources such as networking and storage for all of those containers within the same pod. So firstly, we need to create a pod to manage. So we're gonna type in sudo podman pod and the create command and we want to give this one a name we're going to call this one test pod press enter now that pod has been created and what we're going to do now is we're going to run a container inside of that pod so sudo podman run uh, which we've done before we're going to run a daemon for this so it runs by itself and then we're going to give it the argument pod because we want it to run inside a pod, test pod, and we'll say nginx. This is going to create a nginx container inside of the test pod, the pod we just created, using this argument here. The extra D was for the daemon. So we're gonna press enter, and you see now it's created that already inside of there. So if we now type in again, sudo podman ps a, you can see here we have another container, nginx latest, which just got spun up uh, because of the command we just run. So we can type clear again. Now, one of the things you want to make sure is that during startup and so on of your of your system, especially in transactional servers, you want maybe certain containers to start up on boot. Now, for that, we want to create something in system defolder, and we're going to create a little text file for that. So to do this, we're going to say sudo nano. We're going to get into the etc folder, systemd and system. And we're going to call this um, mycontainer.service and hit enter. Now I already have uh, this file. So I already have this file, so I'm going to press enter. And as you can see here, this is the contents of the file. Now I have put this in the description of the video, but what you're going to see here is that I've made, I've given it a name. I'm just going to leave all this to default right now. You can change this so that you can reference it later, but I've told this to restart always the Nginx container. So I want this to start on boot. So I'm just going to uh, done this one now. Now you can press uh, Control X and press yes to save it and then enter the file name. Once you've done that, you're going to want to make this file uh, enabled and start. So for that, you're going to type in sudo systemctl 
enable. And then my container dot service. Press enter and it's going to enable the file to be used as a systemd uh, service. Then we want to make sure we start that now. So systemctl again. Uh, we're going to say start and then we're going to say my container dot service press enter and now it started and what will happen is when the server reboots this system d uh, service will start up that nginx container on boot and type in clear so now that you have done some basic stuff with podman you'll notice that my interface looks a little different and for the next video, I'm going to show you how to install Cockpit and the dependencies for managing Podman containers. Now on the left hand side, you can see there's a tab here called Podman containers, and this is a really good interface. Um, so here I can manage images, uh, I can manage containers, and as you can see here, I can even see the pod that was created earlier uh, in the commands that we had just done. So this is a really handy way of managing you know, to see what resource are being used and what things you have uh, without using the terminal, which I think is really helpful. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to install this and how to use this. And there you have it. You've done some basic commands on Podman. You've learned how to pull images. You've learned how to set up containers and you've also learned how to create pods and start containers within those pods. Now from here on, it can get much deeper into networking and storage. In the next video, I'm going to take you over cockpit the dependencies for Cockpit for managing uh, all of the Podman uh, installations as well as the containers and the networking there. Now do remember if you like the video please do press the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to get more videos from me, especially for the series about Podman for beginners. As always I will see you in the next video.